Do you ever feel like sometimes nice guys just finish last? I mean, seriously, I didn't want to make this video, guys, but I have to do this video. I really have to make this video. I mean, I respected this guy, and I've watched him for a number of years, and he's taught me a lot. He's been in the game for 40 years. But did you see Jim Cramer last night on Mad Money? Did you guys watch that clip on Ark and Sark? Check this out. So here's the bottom line. Now you know how to bet with POW if you think that Jay Pal wants to destroy the economy. You pour the Sark over the Ark and you bet that they all drown and no one gets out alive. So the, the first problem I have with this, guys, really, is that where's the long-term investing? You know, it used to be about long-term investing, buy quality stocks, hold them for a period of time, and make money, make profit, and retire. Everything has become swing trading. And, and I feel like even with the respectable people, it, you know, I used to respect and watch on TV, I can't get any solid information anymore because it's always just chasing the hot flavor of the week. I mean, oil is doing damage to the greater stock market, and we just keep throwing money at, at oil saying it's going to go to $100 a barrel. But my point is, it's like always just chasing these secular themes, not, not even secular themes, just, you know, the flavor of the month, like, oh, oil's hot. Oh, this is hot. This is hot. I mean, these same stocks, these same companies that are in the arc, when you think about all, you know, Tesla, he's bullish on Tesla, but yet you're telling, you're telling people to short it. And not to short it, you know, when it's at the top. This thing came down. It literally was a couple dollars. In the 65s, it was a few dollars uh, before what it was before the pandemic. So literally the stock was in this like $60 range and the pandemic happened and then it rallied and it gave all that back, you know, a year and a half, two years of gains. And it's at $65 and you make, you make a show telling retail investors to go buy Sark as a hedge. And then today, the thing's down, you know, 5% and the market's, market's ripping at close and the Nasdaq's closing up 2%. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, guys. I mean, it'd be one thing if you told me in December to short ARC and it goes to, to $65. You know, maybe there's more downside. But as a trader, you know, I'm an investor, but I also, I also trade sometimes as well. So I, I wear both hats and I get it. But I try to keep them separate and I have a small account. And if I put my investor hat on right now and say, oh, this, this went from 165 to 65, I'm going to short it here. And I look at all the technicals out there and I look at how bad the sentiment is. Do I really think that that's a good idea? I personally think that that's a terrible idea. It's bad advice. And it's like, it just comes back to where is the long-term investing mindset? Everybody wants to be a trader and get rich quick and be a millionaire overnight. That's not how it works. In the last couple of years, I feel like it's changed everything. Even the people that used to be about long-term investing are, are giving you bad advice. You know, sell your portfolio, liquidate it, go to cash. You know how hard it is to time it? Look at today. Some of your favorite growth stocks, you might have been nibbling them as they were going down. Imagine if you sold out your portfolio and you're trying to time that. And I'm not calling the bottom. Who knows? We could go lower. But to, to think that you're smarter than the market, that you're going to liquidate your portfolio and somehow magically get back in those positions, it's probably not going to work out very well. And you could do that 10 times and you're probably going to fail 9 out of 10 times. So to me, guys, watching this, I had to make a quick video. I haven't been feeling great this week, but I wanted to get something to you. Let's look really quick at the holdings within ARC because I want to go through this and I want to show you what ARC actually holds so you can just get an idea because... A lot of the companies on here, not only is Mad Money and Kramer the bullish on, but they've also had the CEOs literally on the show hyping up the stock. And now you're saying short the whole index that they're never going to recover again? Give me a break. Let's take a look at what's actually in ARK right now, ARKK. Okay, so this is ARKK. And essentially the SARK, the S-A-R-K, it's just shorting all these different stocks. You got Tesla, 8%. Kramer's actually bullish on Tesla, had an amazing blowout quarter. You got Zoom Video. This thing, literally, the free cash flow is almost equivalent to a Procter & Gamble with no growth at all. You got Teladoc, literally trading at 2019 levels, pre-pandemic, before all the growth from the pandemic, before Livongo merger, all of that. You've got Roku. You think people aren't going to stream and cut cable just because work from home is dead? You got Coinbase. Actually, a, a lot of really great numbers in Coinbase, 
fundamentally, it's just people don't want to touch it because they're afraid of if crypto goes up or down, it's going to impact Coinbase. Oh, no. You've got exact sciences. You've got Unity Software, Spotify, UiPath, Twilio, Square. Like, look at these stocks. Shopify, Palantir, DraftKings, Twitter. You know, some of them were a lot of them ahead of themselves. Yeah, I guess the whole index was. But you look at just the top bracket here, you know, 8%, 6%, 6%. A big chunk is in this top 10. And these are high quality companies that are going to grow into their valuations. To to say that you're going to short it here after it went from 160 to 65, to me, it's absolutely just ludicrous, guys. I mean, you can look through this. There's a lot of stocks that you might not know much about. You know, there's the pager duties, the Twitters. I mean, obviously, you know what Twitter is. And Robinhood just had a terrible quarter. I don't think that was a great add to ARK. I'm not necessarily defending all the moves they've made or anything like that. This is not about, you know, me against uh, ARK and defending it or anything like that. But what I, am, what I am doing in this video is just saying, hey, if you're going to short this thing, probably think about doing it before it, it went all the way to $65 and gave up two years of gains. That's all I'm saying. I thought the timing of it was curious. And if you just think about it for a second, it's like, what's really going on there? Is somebody, you know, I have to be careful what I say on YouTube, but just, just think about it for a second. Was there something behind that? Was there more intense to that? Or was he really just telling people to buy Sark as a hedge because it's going to get, you know, the market's going to go a lot lower. Even if the market went lower, what's, what's the risk reward as a trader when it's at $65? I mean, and maybe I'm wrong and this blows up my face and it goes to 40 bucks, but you, you look at risk reward if you're a trader and, you know, this is my point. The, the show is about investing. It should be about long term investing. And we're talking about buying an inverse ETF that's essentially shorting arc when it's already beat down, you know, two years worth of gains beaten down and erased all the way back to pre pandemic levels almost. And then telling the average retail investor watching CNBC to go out and buy this SARC ETF. I, I just... I don't get it, guys. I'm sorry. I just don't. I hope this video is helpful. Just a quick one. I wanted to get off my mind. Wanted to get you a quick video. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care.